having your penis size and sexual performance praised by others spontaneously is an actual need for most men, not only a want. Let's talk about it. And let's talk about why. So you'll have to excuse me in this video for sounding a bit more nasally. I'm overcoming a sickness I'd come down with, but I hope you will excuse that and that we can cover some interesting ground with this subject matter. So I've done multiple videos on this topic, and it's a very significant one. In fact, one of the most popular topics on my channel that many people highly relate to. So what I noticed in my own life was that my source of feeling confident in myself and like every other area, feeling calm, feeling relaxed, feeling at the root core of every single day, deeply satisfied with myself, with my body, with my physiology, with my life, is directly correlated to the women I'm romantic with spontaneously praising my sexual prowess and my penis. It highly increases my happiness in life by a massive margin, by a massive degree. And I can confirm this firsthand in Shining Colors, because before I started actually having intercourse with anyone, I was semi-voluntarily single for most of my life, minus a few dates here and there. But it wasn't really up until my late 20s, early 30s that I really actually dove into guaranteeing and ensuring that I would be successful romantically to where I actually started having intercourse with women. So it was a total night and day different experience. My life before that, I had always been a very optimistic, positive person, no matter what life threw at me. Always able to see the positive in any situation, no matter what. I was always very good at this. And I was always very highly resistant to depression. But there was always this chronic, nagging, bothered disturbance over the fact that I wasn't having intercourse with women. I wasn't having sexual experiences. And it really severely bothered me because I felt physiologically that I was missing something. No matter how confident I was, no matter how much women showed interest in me or fawned over me or whatever, I, I always screwed it up by how I went about interacting. So I had just a plethora of opportunities throughout my entire teenage years and 20s. I just didn't fucking know how to interact with women in a way that would increase their romantic attraction. I had to learn that in my mid-20s, and I finally got really good at it um, by my late 20s. And now I have a very flourishing romantic life um, that's a piece of cake. And I can very easily ensure that I have romantic success with women. So women are automatically already visually attracted to me and interpersonally from interactions out in public. I just need to maintain that attraction that they initially have and it's smooth sailing. My issue when I was in my teens and 20s, for the most part, was the fact that they would be initially attracted visually and otherwise and would approach me and be fawning over me and stuff, you know, all that jazz. But when I started interacting with them, their attraction would noticeably go down extremely quickly, mainly because I'm highly eccentric. Uh, I'm highly weird in nature. I'm highly quirky. Uh, and I have very specific hyper fixated ways of going about conversations and talking and circumscribed interest, all that jazz, you know, the stuff that you experience as someone diagnosed on the autism spectrum, right? So it was never a lack of confidence in those areas ever. Uh, it was simply learning how to interact. However, I was also paranoid, uh, especially as a teenager, but still somewhat in my 20s. I was always absolutely paranoid that my penis size would be considered not especially huge and especially noteworthy to women. However, that concern was completely invalid I realized upon my very first sexual encounter. 
one of the very first things she told me was I was the biggest she had ever been with. So that changed everything. And a little bit before that, when I started to show my stuff online, just to see what people would say, uh, the feedback was tremendously positive. All across the board, people were saying, wow, you're huge, you're big, this is amazing, you have the perfect size, so on and so, everybody. Across the board, okay? And that was fucking amazing. And the fact that I had, you know, cuckold couples contacting me right, left, and center, wanting me to bang their wives and stuff, I was like, okay, that's, boom, that's all I needed to know, that's what I needed to hear, that's what I needed to see. My life is paradise now, right? But... Before, I was basically, I had a totally irrational paranoia of being considered, even being considered only average bothered the hell out of me. Even the possibility of that drove me insane when I was uh, a teenager up into my early 20s. And this is a big problem that pornography induces in so many men. It's like men don't realize they're actually much bigger than they think they are. But the issue is that it takes real life sexual encounters to actually understand that. It takes actual real life experiences to realize you're actually much bigger than you think you are. So me realizing over time that the seven to eight inch range of size was actually considered ideal lengthwise and the... 5.5 5.5 to 6 inch thickness range was considered the ideal thickness range as well. Uh, I realized over time that, holy shit, my size that I've literally always had since I was a teenager is considered across the board, like everywhere, to be the ideal size range. So I literally never had anything to worry about. I was literally beating myself over the head over literally nothing for fucking years and years. And it was the dumbest thing ever. And I was like, Holy shit, I literally wasted decades of my life being paranoid of something that was stupid as fuck to be paranoid about. What the hell? And so this is what's going on, basically. Once you start learning about actual size, once you start learning about camera angle stuff and all, you're like, oh, okay, I get it. So, like, basically, even the largest penises in porn aren't really that much bigger than anybody else's penis. They're really not. When you really, when it really comes down to it, the differences in size are really not that drastic. They just aren't. Okay. So that was one of the major factors I realized. When I realized my size was already about the size of one of my favorite porn stars, Shane Diesel, I was just, yeah, I was on cloud nine. uh, And ever since then, it's been smooth sailing. I've never been ever since then sexually insecure at all about my size. And on top of that, I realized that actually being big, but not too big is actually much better because there's a lot more stuff that you can do overall that you necessarily can't do the same way if you're too large. So you have more advantages being big, but not too big than you do being uh, too big or borderline too big, etc. right? So there's that as well. And I'll hone in on those details more in other videos. But for this video, I wanted to give you all that background to my own situation so that you have an understanding of where I'm coming from. Uh, And this video might be a video in a multi-part series. So if the video or audio cuts off, just know that I will have a follow-up in in an other part of video. I've been having some uh, issues with the devices I've been using. Um, shutting off before I finish recordings and stuff. So if that happens, just uh, go to part two, okay? I'm just giving you a heads up just in case it happens. But anyway, the feedback I've gotten on this channel and elsewhere is a lot more men who otherwise would be totally terrified to come forward and say something about their own insecurities and the issues they face with this are now getting more bold and brave because they know on my channel, in my comment section, they have a safe space where I will immediately remove anybody who blasts jokes or insults at them at all, period, across the board. And I'll hound down those individuals for themselves being sexually insecure in a cruel, negative way uh, to where they're exposed publicly for that. So basically, with that environment, more people feel confident to talk about this. They know they're not going to get insulted here, and that's a very important thing that men need, okay? 
across the board. All right. Whatever their size may be or whatever their security level may be, it's important to have a space where you can just talk, real talk. None of this bullshit about jokes or insults or all that crap, because these are serious conversations. We're talking about men needing these things. And if they don't have them, they're nightmarishly depressed or suicidal. So here's the situation in the world right now. This is real talk. This is what's going on in the world. This is why so many men are majorly massively depressed and why so many men are also borderline suicidal or directly suicidal uh, over and over again or intermittently suicidal as a pattern, okay? Because many men throughout the world are, number one, not having intercourse with women, even though they may be tall men, they may be confident, they may be good looking, and there's a bunch of factors why that's not happening, and it's tormenting them, okay? Because they need that encouragement sexually to feel happy in life. It's a mental, emotional, physiological need. Yes, you can physically survive without it. It's not like you don't require it to the degree you require food in the sense of your body will keep going without it. But you're going to chronically feel disturbed and bothered and miserable your whole life if you don't have it. If you're like me, psychologically. And many men are like me psychologically in this regards, emotionally and otherwise, and hormonally. So what I noticed was when I started receiving this praise from the first person I had intercourse with all the way onwards, including size queens specifying that they actually preferred my size in particular as the big size that they prefer. They'd been with all sorts of different sizes, smaller, larger, all of it. And they preferred my sweet spot size over other sizes they'd been with. And they, they of their own accord told me this. I didn't have to pull it out of them or anything. They just said this to me. Okay. And you can physically feel it when you're in there thrusting it. So you can feel that they're completely fulfilled and full inside. Right. So I know they're being truthful. They're not just saying this because I can physically feel it also. Um, and the reason I say that is when that started happening, Everything changed. Like the things that chronically bothered me stopped chronically bothering me like they did before, because no matter what happened, I could always fall back on the fact that I can guarantee that I can have it this no matter what. I can have women that are moaning in pleasure when I'm making love to them and actually complimenting me of their own accord, both in that regards and also interpersonally, emotionally and otherwise. And, you know them spontaneously telling me that I'm the best thing that's ever happened to them, etc. Right. I can always guarantee that I have that no matter what is a fallback, no matter what, if no, if everything else fails, I still have that. Right. And that's the key difference here. If a man does not have that as a reliable fallback, if all else fails, then He's going to be chronically miserable and bothered and disturbed. Whether he admits this or not, whether he acknowledges this or not, you can see it in their behavior. So all sorts of men worldwide, you can see in their behavior that they are bothered by not having regular, consistent sexual experiences with gorgeous women that they prefer. Okay? Them lacking that leads to them being bitter, resentful, and so they go on all these tangent narratives to distract themselves from the fact that that's really what is bothering them, okay? So many men don't admit it, and, you know, the men who do admit it, they try to blame it all on women. It's women's fault, this and that, blah, blah, blah. But re what's really going on, whatever the individual situation is, is the fact that we're living in a world where they're not experiencing those things to their standards or desires, therefore they're miserable. That's what's happening, okay? Okay. Never mind the individual narratives or this or that or whatever. The point is they're not having regular consistent sex with the types of women they desire. And they're not receiving spontaneous praise from women either when they are having sexual experiences of the women specifically glorifying their sexual prowess and or their size, etc. That's not happening even when they're having intercourse with women. They're just having intercourse, but they're not getting complimented. Okay. And that also bothers them. So this is what is going on throughout the entire world everywhere, okay? Now, 
pornography, big penis obsessed or fixated pornography absolutely doesn't help with this in terms of men who are sexually insecure in that particular way and lacking that experience also in their physical life, right? Outside of pornography. So really, when you get down to it, if you talk to them in one-on-one real talk, this is what they will describe to you, okay? So I kid you not, literally the only reason I had the confidence to start talking about these subjects publicly on my channel was because I'm not sexually insecure about that anymore, like I used to be way in the past, whatsoever. If I was, I wouldn't be talking about it publicly because here's also the situation that's driving men nuts and making them miserable. Men across the world know that if you even talk about this subject matter, you're going to have all sorts of trolls and idiots and dumbasses doing this finger pointing thing. Oh, look, why are you talking about it in the first place? You must yourself also be sexually insecure of this type. Ha ha ha. Chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. Right? Blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And that's exactly what happens because the world is full of these dumbasses who don't understand that talking about a subject matter doesn't equal you yourself are the one currently anymore suffering from those issues. It does not follow. Furthermore, we also live in a world where there's very few people actually exposing those who insult others or blast out penis-sized jokes of whatever variety intended as insults. If they're compliments, they're fine. And if they're intended as an insult, that's a problem. We live in a world where people don't understand that the ones doing that themselves are the problem people. They're the ones, they're the reason why these men are depressed as hell and suicidal as hell. It's because these motherfuckers who insult and joke to them exist in the world. That's why they're suicidally depressed. But the world is full of these sick buffoons who don't fucking understand that. Okay, so you have to you have to spell it out to them, right? So for example, on my channel here, I've gotten many different commenters, many dumbasses coming out of my channel being like, oh, obviously you're experiencing this yourself. Oh, obviously you yourself are having this issue, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, actually, not at all. Quite the opposite. In fact, I'm brave to talk about it because I'm not experiencing those issues anymore. If I was, I wouldn't be talking about it because I know my psychology. If I had my psychology that I still had back as my teenage years, early 20s, I wouldn't be talking about this. I'd be embarrassed as hell to talk about it or bring it up because I know what people assume. And people's assumptions are stupid fucking bullshit. So they're irrelevant, but they still go on anyway. So I was like, you know, wait a minute. What's really going on here? What's the, ah, okay. I see what's going on. So what's happening is these motherfuckers, they're still trying to play the spiel of, oh, if you're sexually insecure, that equals you're less of a man because you feel some variation of sexual insecurity. Bullshit. No, it doesn't. Sexual insecurity itself is not the problem at all, no matter what variety of sexual insecurity is, including sexual insecurity of being concerned about being too thick or too long which is in fact a type of sexual insecurity that I experience in many cases. So sexual insecurity, no matter what variety, it's neither here nor there. This is how you call out these bullshit pieces of crap. These motherfuckers who try to pull this. And this is how we change the social narrative and are able to have real talk about this stuff. What you do is you spell it out for these motherfuckers that The problem is people who insult others in relationship to sexual things, not caring whether that other person is going to be severely depressed after seeing or reading that or suicidal or more suicidal after reading it. And some people are are insanely fucking vile that they actually want others to be more depressed and more suicidal. That's why they purposefully insult or joke about it, because they want that to be the result. Okay. Because they're that fucking disgusting. So that is the problem we're talking about. So 
the people who do that, they try to spin it that sexual insecurity. Oh, look, they try to play the echo game, but you can immediately stop them from doing this because what they'll do is this. If you talk about these subject matters at all, doesn't matter what you say about them. You just discuss them. Oh, look, he's always discussing these things. He's obsessed with them. Look at therefore, therefore, therefore. No. We're saying and we're calling out the problem being people being cruel to others with sexual jokes is the problem. Being sexually insecure by itself isn't the problem that we're calling out in this video. Because people wouldn't be sexually insecure in those ways anywhere near the degree that they are if insulting motherfuckers like you didn't exist in the world, if you were extinct. Okay? That's what we're dealing with here. And the ones who do that themselves are vastly more sexually insecure than fucking anybody in a negative, cruel, bad way, which is the variation of sexual insecurity that is the problem. Okay? The variation that spurs a man on to be cruel to other men, most of whom he doesn't even know, and blast bullshit out online or in person. Not knowing or not caring that even if it's not the man he's directing it at, other men seeing that, who might themselves be insecure in a way that's not wrong because it's just a natural feeling that they're having, might actually be severely depressed. Holy shit, I can't believe this person is joking about this. Even though they're not directing it at me, they're joking to somebody else. What the hell? Why am I still living in this world? And thus the suicidal ideation continues. Do you see? This is what goes on here. And you have to fucking surgically spell shit out to people for them to understand these fucking things. You know? That's the other part of the fucking problem. So... The biggest issue is men throughout the world are fucking mortified at even being publicly considered to be other than big or huge in penis size. They, they can't even stand the possibility that others don't deem them to be that assumptively or psychologically. Never mind the fact that people never see you directly or that it's weird as fuck that they would comment on it anyway beyond what you yourself say about it. But most men throughout the world are mortified of what others think about their size or this or that or whatever. I personally am not. Whereas in the past, I was. When I was a teenager, early 20s, I was mortified. Because nowadays I know better. But here's the fact of the matter. And I'm being fully straight up with you. If I actually was legitimately considered other than big in size... I wouldn't talk about this publicly because yes, I'm dependent on others praise for my confidence period. Always have been in that regards. If others praise isn't there, the confidence isn't there. That's how my brain works. That's how it always worked. So I know not everybody is necessarily like that. That's how I am though. Right? So I go by on what I'm experiencing in terms of what my romantic partners say to me in that regards. I really couldn't give half a shit what others who aren't romantic with me say about it. In fact, I just fucking laugh at it. Like if, if basically somebody who doesn't fucking know me, they've never met me. They have no idea about anything about me in person and private or anything like that. And they're sure as hell never going to be romantic with me. They're literally the dumbest motherfucker that's ever walked the planet, and they're literally just exposing shit about themselves if they try to insult me or in indicate something. Oh, you're talking about these things, therefore, you're insecure about your size. No, actually, that's you just being dumb as fuck, actually. That's really what that is. And in fact, not only that, it's exposing that you yourself have the urge to try and hint at that, because you obviously are insecure about that. Otherwise, you wouldn't even mention something like that. You just wouldn't, okay? And you'd realize how stupid you are to those who are attuned to what you're actually doing. You'd, real, you'd see it. But it's like a lot of these people, they do the work for us. They expose their idiocy for us to expose on a silver fucking platter, right? So it makes it quite easy. But there's plenty of men out here who don't have a voice, who are incredibly insecure about that, and many men who actually do have what is considered an only average or only small size. Because this, this is the other part 
that is almost never discussed anywhere that really needs to sink into the public and they need to really fucking understand this. Most men psychologically throughout the world, pretty much every man I've talked to and interacted with needs almost to the level of food, close to the level of food they need mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physiologically, hormonally, they need the ones who they're romantic with. Number one, they need the romance itself for their health, okay? Spontaneously from others and towards them. They need that first and foremost. And on top of that, they need to have their penis size and prowess praised by who they're romantic with. They need this, okay? So them not having that, is simply a world of misery. It's not good. So for most men psychologically, being considered only average is also miserable. It's almost as miserable as being considered too small for most men, right? So no matter what their size are, most men are mortified at the even the idea of being considered only average. It's, it's like a chronic disturbance and paranoia in most men that exist. So it's not like when people give these narratives out, Oh, you're totally fine. You're totally normal. That's, that's literally like a death sentence. No man wants to hear that he has a normal penis size. They don't want to hear that. They're, they're interested in hearing that they're especially big, that they're especially large. Hearing that they're normal is like a slap in the face to most men. That's the opposite of what they want to hear. But you have a world full of people who are oblivious to, they don't understand this, that, that is associated in a man's brain with being mediocre, okay? Not especially sticking out, literally, and standing out, literally, in the minds of others or in the visual shock of others. This is precisely the psychology that pornography hones in on. They know that most men throughout the world have this psychology towards their penis and sexual prowess, and they have this need, and this is what they hone in on and drill in on. OK, so if a man doesn't actually have an above average penis or a, an actually big penis or an actual huge penis, he's going to actually in real life experience. Oh, you're totally normal. You should be you should be satisfied. You should be confident. You're normal. You're within, this is totally normal and healthy. Little do they know doctors, others, whoever else that tell them this being told you're totally normal and healthy is like, oh, fuck. Well, I'm not especially unique. I don't especially stand out in the minds or hearts of women that fill the world or you or others that I'm just mediocre, basically. In other words, you should be satisfied being mediocre. In other words, is what men hear when people tell them that. OK, but men aren't satisfied being mediocre. So this is the eternal chronic plague problem of men lacking what's considered especially big or especially huge of a penis is they they're chronically bothered by the fact that they aren't the one that sticks out uniquely beyond other men. That's what's bothering them. It's not that it's not even that men are worried about being small specifically. It's they're worried about being considered only normal is what bothers them. That's what bothers them. That is what disturbs them. Okay. <laughs> so I'll talk about in other videos. There's two series of behavior you can look for. I'm talking about behavior within the fold of cruelty towards other men types, insults towards other men types and how they go about it, how they go about doing this. You can actually sort of detect what type of a penis size a man is insecure about because men who have average sizes, they have a certain series. If they are cruel types of men towards other men, they have a certain series of behaviors, a way they talk, a way they carry themselves that is the nature of a man who's insecure about having an only normal penis size, but who's not insecure about it specifically being small. There's a separate set of behaviors there. Now, a man who's insecure about his penis size actually being small, he has a more extreme other separate set of behaviors if he's the cruel type. Okay, There's two separate sets of behaviors, and it's a very interesting subject matter that you'll find quite fascinating because I've been able to pinpoint down exactly what you want to look for behavior-wise. Once again, it's never a problem if the man is kind to others. He just has his own insecurities in private or whatever, or he talks about them, but he's not mean to others, though. It's like, okay, if he talks about, I have this insecurity, that insecurity, but he's, he's a kind person to other people, no problem, no issues. We're strictly talking about those who are cruel to others driven by it, 
All right. And I really can't emphasize that enough. So next time you see some dumbass say, oh, you're insecure too. It's like, motherfucker, that's totally irrelevant. It has zero to do with how insecure or how non-insecure somebody is. That has nothing to do with the subject matter we're talking about in terms of calling out your bullshit. We're talking about strictly being cruel to others and insulting them or joking about their penis size is what we're calling out in terms of the bad behavior part. Okay. And then the insecurity part is a totally separate topic, which men should only ever receive support and encouragement on in terms of being able to bring themselves out of it. Okay. Only that never jokes, never insults, nothing. Cause that doesn't help anybody. And it especially doesn't help them in suffering from it. It just makes it 10 times fucking worse. So if you're a vile rot bag piece of shit and you want to make someone suffering from that even more traumatized and tormented, then rot away, fuck you, and go wank off in a corner till your dick drains down and you scream, okay? Just do that, all right? Because I don't like to joke about people dying or saying they need to die. That's why I use that when I say rot away, that's what's happening anyway. So it's like, you know, if they're psycho- basically if their psychology is that toxic towards others, they're internally organ wise, physiolo- they're going to be rotting away faster anyway. So I just say, okay, may you rot away faster than not, if you're not willing to get out of that psychology. So therefore I can basically say, just fuck off and die without actually wishing them to die because it's, it's just basically, okay, may what's already happening to you is just speed up. May your health just gradually get worse. And may you just literally rot away faster because your psychology is so rotten. So why not? You may as well. Your, your body may, may as well follow your rotten psychology. Your physiology may as well rot along with your rotten psychology. That's basically what I'm getting at, okay? So that's why I use that versus, you know, death jokes or whatever, because those are just fucking disgusting. I don't wish anybody to die or wish anybody to kill themselves or jump out. Never. I don't wish that for anybody, okay? I just wish people would change their psychologies, if they can, but certain individuals, they just, they can't do it. It's impossible. They're just going to be remain a rot bag no matter what. So for those, it's all right. May you just rot away, you know, fuck you just rot away and be gone. You know, your rot bag fucking worm sack because you're not helpful. You're not encouraging other men. You're not useful around any of us. You're not useful around women. You're just a rot. You're, you're a rot sack. That's all you are. Period. That's what you are. So rot away, be what you are, you know? And do it in a corner somewhere where nobody knows about you and you just like disappear. You know what I'm saying? So stay tuned for part two, because each one of these video topics I'm going to deal with in sections because there's so much ground to cover here. Okay. But I hope this video has been a good introduction to this topic and that you yourself understand how important this is to men throughout the world so that when you interact with men in regards to this topic, you have an encouraging, inspiring attitude towards them and you don't discourage them. Okay. And that you, you understand why it's so damaging to insult or joke to men about this at all ever for any reason. Very fucking damaging. Okay. The only exception would be if if a man voluntarily requests you to engage in it with him as some fetish thing that he himself requests any other situation, it's totally inappropriate and it's cruel and it's fucked up as hell to insult a man in regards to anything sexual. It's just, it's incredibly bad fucking form. It's awful. Okay. And it's bad form because it makes you out to be a totally sexually insecure, wormish jackass that it's actually helpful to hear from people like me. So you stop doing that because it's going to, it's going to prevent others from accurately seeing you as the sexually insecure jackass that you are. Okay. So you listening to me saying you shouldn't do that is going to help you. I'm actually helping you by encouraging you to abstain from saying those jokes to others because, you know, especially if you say it to others, because if somebody does it with you, they're just totally wasting their fucking time and they're just totally shooting themselves in the foot because it's like, okay, whatever. That's literally the dumbest thing I've ever seen. And I just fucking laugh at it. Like I, I legit find it humorous, but I feel actually somewhat sorry for the person doing it because I was like, this motherfucker has no idea how much of a sexually insecure piece of shit, dumbass of a cruel variety 
this makes him out to be. He has no fucking idea. He's totally oblivious. He thinks somehow that him saying this to me, being seen by others, is going to make him out to be more of a man in the minds of others or some stupid shit like that. When it's in fact, it's having the exact opposite effect. He has no fucking idea. That's what I'm laughing at, actually. I'm laughing at the fact that this cruel piece of shit has no idea. That's literally the effect that's happening from him saying that shit to me. He has no fucking clue. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> so, God, it's just. So the conclusion is this, all right? This is what I want you to take home after this video. The conclusion is, yes, affirmative. As a man who has a particular hormonal physiology, if you're like me at all, you absolutely need to have regular, consistent, physical intercourse with women and you need to have them it's a need close to food you need to have them spontaneously from their end praising both your sexual prowess and your penis size and also your personality romanticness your how awesome and amazing you are you need that happening on a consistent basis spontaneously from the end of the other okay you need that taking place because if you don't have it you're miserable all right. And from this basis, this is real talk. This is what I'm going to base all my other future videos on following this topic. So the next video, I'm going to talk about specifically the particular inner psychological things that go on in a man's brain, thoughts and head in relationship to a woman praising his size and also praising his sexual prowess and others doing the same around him distinguished from people not doing that around him and the differences in health effects that has on a man because this has directly to do with health okay so it is healthy for a man to have that praise and acknowledgement and encouragement it's unhealthy for a man to lack that it's damaging to a man's health physically and otherwise to lack those things it leads to chronic stress, chronic disturbance, chronic bother, because he's lacking something he needs. Just like if you're chronically stressed and disturbed if you lack food, or if you lack a full nutrient profile that you need, you can still trudge along and survive. It's not going to literally kill you, but gradually over time, it will kill you. It'll affect your health. You'll go gray faster. It'll affect all your like um, experiences. You'll, you'll be clouded by this. All sorts of fucking things health-wise will be adversely affected if you lack that. Okay. And nobody can bullshit me and say this isn't going on with men or that men don't actually need this bullshit. Of course they need it. That's why it's bothering men so bad. That's why they're depressed in the first place. If they didn't need it, they wouldn't be fucking depressed about these things. All right. If it wasn't an actual goddamn need, it is one. That's why they're depressed. That's the reason. All right. Just like if you deny a person a certain nutrient profile, it's going to depress and disturb and bother their physiological system as time goes on. Like, really bad. All right? So no more of this bullshit, you can handle it crap, oh, you need to just deal with it. That's because men are doing that. They are handling it and dealing with it as much as they can, but they can only do so much. They need encouragement of others. This is what needs to motherfucking happen. This is what people need to goddamn understand. They need genuine, legitimate encouragement and validation of their desires and preferences and what they want in life. Okay? That's what they need. No more of this, you should be satisfied with which, if a man isn't satisfied with it. No more of this, oh, just be confident in your, no, no, bullshit. A man can be confident in every other area of his life completely. But if he's not confident in that one particular area or that's bothering him, that's going to still bother him. So his confidence in every other aspect, his masculinity in every other area of life is totally irrelevant in relationship to this topic, okay? People need to get this through their heads, like big time. So there you have it. I hope this video has been inspirational and helpful and encourages you to watch the rest of the videos in this upcoming series. PP signing out and plunging in and i hope to assist you and help you in being able to do the same going forward and be praised by others spontaneously while you do so have a good day